Welcome everyone to another Console Wars of the Past documentary here. Today we're taking a look at the ColecoVision. Ta -da! This is definitely an underappreciated console. The ColecoVision was an awesome system for its day. Now here, this is the cartridge port. There's a nice little look down in there. Okay. And this is our... What does that do? Turn it on. Oh, that's the on switch. Oh, duh, I was looking at the on and off button. There's the reset, which is on a console. And here are the controllers, because we have them placed in here. Not um, a bad design. No, that's actually a pretty decent design. you got the two fire buttons on the side there. You've got the um, stick there on the top. With lots of range of motion. Yeah, it's got a really good range of motion, unlike how the Intellivisions are, where you kind of just press in that direction. Use it how you want. Thumb, hand, got right. a little couple different options there. It spins. Spins, I don't know if that has anything to do with gameplay, but... Um, you also have the numeric keyboard, which was kind of um, standard for the time. It has a nice membrane on the uh, on the buttons. Actually feels like you're pressing them. Push them down nice. And we have uh, overlays as well, which I don't know how that one works. How does that work? I don't know. No, it definitely goes under. I don't know. Well, we haven't messed with the overlays. We have an overlay, but we don't know where the hell it's supposed to go. So, here's your overlay, which were popular at the time. Yeah, overlays were a big thing then. Now, we have the plug-in for the controller. Yeah, you also notice everything's kind of ingrained in this. It's a nice design on the entire system. Now, see, the um, it also has unattachable, like, attachable controllers instead of the Intellivision's hardwired. And not only Solar that, uh, we have along with it the, the official roller. arcade roller ball. And this is a nice item. Look how nice the range of motion is on the, on the roller here. Very nice. You plug your controllers into here so you have some place to put them. And this is, again, a nice design with this. You've got pass-throughs. So the, the power for the roller ball passes through the regular AC power. No extra plug-ins. It all goes into one deal. And then with the controllers, they'll also plug right into the system. Right into here. After uh, you, you plug both of these into the system, and then you plug your controllers right into the roller ball, so you don't have to have, you don't have to pick or choose what you have. You can have It's all attached in. to one unit. Yeah, really nice design overall with everything they did with this system. So you could actually attach this and not unattach it ever again. Because you could just take your controllers from here, and it has a switch, which you use joystick or roller. Yeah. Great design on all this stuff. They really had a... Nice company. fire buttons on this, too. Nice solid ones. Kind of like arcade fighter sticks. And, of course, we've got some, uh, some suction pads on the bottom to keep it in place. So they need clean, but are not quite sticky enough. So you have your arcade yeah. action. That was the main idea with this console, was bringing the arcade action home. Yeah, and they definitely did that. Now you have your expansion module on the front to allow it to become a full Atom computer. So the expansion module actually had use, unlike a lot of these systems where the stuff was just there. You could turn this into a full Coleco Atom computer. Now that also uh, played in when they released the... Uh, adapter to play 2600 games. Okay. Um, now here's our power cord. That's where the power supply plugs in. And there's our video cable, which, as you see, is not hardwired. Channel select. That's it. So that's a pretty decent design on that. Let's take a look at some of our cartridges here. As you see, not, mo not unlike Atari cartridges. Nice sides. There you have a place where you can slide in your overlays. Here's an actual overlays. overlay we can... Uh, oh yeah, there's a sure decent you. overlay. Not sure what that other one was all about. Well, that one just looked odd. So, But yeah, you, you see the point there. You just push it you got to fight with it for 10 minutes, but you get them in there. 
while he's fixing the overlay, we're going to take a look at the power brick here. This is a power brick. You can injure somebody with this power brick. I think, I think I that might. I think that's that might be the biggest one I've seen. For this era, the the title definitely goes to Coleco. Yes. Outside of the uh, Xbox 360 one. <laughs> ah, there we go. I see you have your color-coded ones, your dog button. Very nice. Very nice overlay. Very colorful as well. Colorful overlays help. Now we also have Pit Stop, an Epix game. Uh, Root Beer Tapper. Now that's a Midway game. As we'll look at here, a lot of these are big arcade names and big arcade hits, and that's mostly what was on the system. Uh, not a lot of original software, but they brought some great arcade stuff on them. Speaking of which, Donkey Kong Jr. They uh, officially licensed by Nintendo. They have got the officially licensed Nintendo games for a song, and we'll get into that. Squish'em Sam. We got Pitfall 2, the lesser known sequel to Pitfall. We have the strangest cartridge I think I've ever seen laid my eyes on. We have Artillery Duel and Chuck Norris Super Kicks. Yes, and Chuck there, Norris game. And there was a, a series of different double-ended cartridges. You just cram it in. Whichever one you want to play. You want to play a little Chuck Norris? Bam! Chuck Norris Super Kicks You are Chuck right Norris. There. And the game's not nearly as cool as Chuck Norris looks on the, the packaging there. But hey... <laughs> And we've got Sub Rock, which is a great Sega game. From Sega. Mr. Do, another classic arcade title. See a lot of good arcade ports on this. You have Popeye, which is a Nintendo title. You've got Donkey Kong, which is another Nintendo title. And on we have the top labels here for this system. Oh yes, top labels. That's essential. <laughs> Frontline. This is a Taito game. Another big arcade name. We have Buck Rogers, We've Bump and Jump. Bump and Jump from Data East. We've got Victory from Exidy. We've got Venture from Exidy. Exidy really supported this system well. Uh, Slither. And we've got Looping from Venture Line. Now that is a look at the, some of the titles. Here we have some random manuals here we got quite Manual, a few manuals, manuals here. and promotional items now the uh, the manuals came in the blue black and light blue and white coloring not a whole lot of color but not bad we got some donkey kong action going on here oh he's in love with her mm. <laughs> here's, here's the dual one for your double ended cartridge not a whole lot there now here's kind of a different one from Activision by David Crane, who made the original cliffhanger. Or Pitfall. Yeah. Um, this root beer tapper one. It looks like a menu. Yeah, so this one's kind of interesting. Kind of like that. I like that guy. This is awesome. I really like that what they put into that one. I have a warranty card. Some color tuning. Here's how to get your colors correct. Put this up beside your TV and match the colors. Pit Stop. Popeye. Now this one was published by Parker Brothers. But it was made by Nintendo. Parker Brothers. We wouldn't see in the video game industry too much after this. Victory. Victory. Venture, which is another classic. Slither. Frontline, Looping, got Chuck Nor Super Kicks. There's the Chuck. As you can see, you adventure through the game here. It's a terrible game. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's really not that good. Chuck Norris is the, the only roller cool thing controller. About it. Yes, here's the official manual for the roller controller. Tells, shows you all the ways to use it. You can't hear us.